Hi, my name is Dr. Janelle Ott. I teach bassoon at Angelo State University as well as Abilene Christian University and McMurray University. Uh, I also have several years experience teaching private lessons to high school students throughout Texas, um, including in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So I'm here today to help you prepare your 2023 to 2024 All Region Etude Number no. One, which is Etude Number no. 22 out of the Wise and Born. Um, so this is the first etude, oftentimes the first etude, the purpose is to kind of showcase your technical ability and how cleanly you can play at a fast tempo. And this tempo is certainly challenging for the etude. The etude is not difficult until you try to play it fast and then it gets really difficult. So here is my advice for you before I play through the piece. First of all, do not make the mistake of trying to make your staccatos super short. Focus on making them clean. If you try to make them overly short, what often ends up happening is it's like you're playing every note accented. And that actually makes the note sound a little bit longer, and it's also way more work. It's really easy to wear yourself out on this piece if you're not careful. Uh, my second advice to you, flicking or venting is absolutely necessary in this etude. If you are unaware, flicking or venting is the process of using these keys not everybody has this key, but everyone has these two keys. When you are playing A natural at the top of the staff up until D above the staff. When you use these keys correctly, it ensures that the note is going to speak properly when you try to play it. If the note does not speak properly, we call that cracking and it will just add a little extra noise and make the piece sound a lot less clean. So we want to avoid that. Um, what happens when you crack a note is that you're basically getting the note to speak in two octaves at the same time. So I'm going to do just the first measure with flicking and then without. I want you to see if you can hear a difference. With, now this is without. Wow. Ah. It's subtle because I have tried really hard to not do this ever, but it's just a little cleaner if you are flicking correctly. And now is the time to add this technique because you won't be able to change what your fingers do right before you go into competition. The next important thing is breathing. There are not a lot of places to do it in this etude. So I'm going to share my breathing tips with you with the caveat that these are the breathing places that I choose when I'm playing the piece all the way through. If you have done all region etudes before, you'll know that we don't play these etudes all the way through. You're given an excerpt or a portion of the etude to play through for the competition. And usually you do not know what that portion is until you show up for competition. Um, so if you are playing a shorter section, you often can get away with not breathing quite as often. If you're playing the entire etude, you must breathe more often or you are definitely not going to make it to the end. For the same reason, when you have very long crescendos written into this piece, which we have twice, twice in the piece, once starting in measure 13 and the other time starting in measure 21. If you try to grow too much, you will use up too much air and you will not be able to make it to the end of your phrase without stopping the phrase so you can breathe. So I recommend that you move slowly and don't overdo your dynamics. To the same end, the piece begins and it's marked piano. Be careful that you are not so worried about playing piano that you allow your pitch to go very sharp because the more quiet wheelie we play on bassoon, the easier it is for us to be very sharp. You want to be in tune. If that means you're playing a little bit louder on the opening, I can live with that. As long as I can hear a difference between your piano and your forte, I think that is perfectly acceptable. All right, where I breathe. Measure four, at the end of the measure where you have an eighth rest. I think everybody does that. Before the fermata in measure eight, I think everybody does that as well. I like to sneak in a breath in measure 10 after either one of the long notes. Just cut that note a little short so you can get a little sip of air. 
Um, and then I don't breathe again until the eighth rest and measure 16. But I will often take an extra beat to get a really good breath in at 16. So I'm not exhausted when I start the next measure. From there, I go all the way from measure 17 to the end of measure 24 where we have the next fermata. And then it's like the beginning. I sneak a breath somewhere in measure 26 after one of the long notes. If I need another breath, which I will because I'm playing this all the way through, I will take a breath in measure 31 after the C sharp. That is the first measure of the second to last line. Um, normally you want it to be relatively short. So I'm gonna play that measure for you. Ah. That's about what you wanna be able to do is just a little sip of air. Now I'm going to be playing this through with the metronome so you can hear how it lines up. And because I'm playing with the metronome, I'm going to take a full breath, like that it takes a beat long, um, just so I stay with the metronome. Uh, I would also recommend that you breathe in measure 35, that's the third measure from the end, before you start your ar arpeggiation downwards. Now, the last thing I wanna talk to you about before I play this piece, there's actually two things. Um, the low register notes. When you're going from high register, like above the staff, to low register below the staff, that is difficult for us to do well. And the problem is getting your low notes to speak and getting them to be in tune. They're going to want to be sharp or not come out at all. So how do we work on this? Well, it helps to have a good read. Um, maybe playing this on the read you bought at the beginning of the school year is not a great plan. I would recommend you order something new now. Um, especially because a lot of read makers are kind of backed up right now and it might take you a minute to get something. If you're curious about the reads that I recommend, you can go to my website, janelleottbassoon.com and under like links for students, I believe I have information about the read sources I recommend. Um, okay, the other thing, long tones. Long tones are a good idea. Not the kind you do in band together. Long tones where you have a tuner on your stand, you're in the room by yourself, and you are just working on isolating and perfecting your pitch on a particular note. So I like to do it with my metronome on and my, my, my metronome's gonna be on around 60. That's just my default tempo. I'm gonna do it on a low D. I'm gonna to try to get it to be absolutely in tune with the tuner. And I wanna hold it for eight counts. This is what I call an eight count straight tone. You're, the idea with the long tones is to work towards getting them to be in tune right away for the entire eight counts. If you can't get them in tune at all, get it closer to being in tune and try it again tomorrow. If you can't get it in tune for eight counts, get it longer in tune and come back to it tomorrow. Also, you need to alternate which notes you work on. So that's the first way I recommend you work on your pitch in your low register. The second way I recommend you do it is isolate the low notes and um so if we're looking at a section like the fourth line of the piece i'm actually going to start after the fermata and measure eight so this is how it sounds as written <laughs> playing it without the high notes at all until you can get the low notes to speak. The high notes are going to come out, I promise. They're, they're ready. You're really good at playing those notes already. So and if it means you have to play a little slower, fine. Play it slower. Get it in tune. The, especially at the very end of the piece, the last three measures are going to want to end sharp. It's a descending 
descending arpeggio centered on D when you're already tired. So for the arpeggio at the end, I recommend you play it through slowly with your metronome on, get every note in tune with the tuner. And I also recommend you employ a practice called the floating fermata, which is where you're going to play the piece normally, but you're going to choose a note and you're gonna just stop on that note. And while you're holding it, you're going to check in with the tuner. So for example, and you want to play it until you get that note perfectly in tune. Um, I'd also recommend you spend some time on just the last note of the piece because that, if you can get that in tune, everything else will be much easier to get in tune. All right. I said there was another thing. It's related to fingerings. So for this etude, because I want it to sound very clean, I tend to go for the long C sharp fingering, which is one, two, three, C sharp key, no bar, and right hand two, three, four. This gives us a very different sound from the short C sharp, which is left hand only and include the bar. I actually prefer the short C sharp, but in cases like this, I'm going to use the long C sharp because I know it's going to give me a better sound quality. So um, there's one other thing. This is right around the midpoint of the piece. So the very last note of the fifth line down is an F sharp. Just for that note, I recommend you use the pinky F sharp. So whisper key, half hole, two, three, one, two, three, and then this most annoying pinky key because the note right after it is a B flat and it's just easier to get to if you don't have your thumb on the F sharp key. Um, okay, so with that being said, I'm going to try to play this for you. Um, wish me luck. Hopefully I don't mess it up. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to do it at 110, which is in the range of the tempi you're supposed to be doing. That being said, don't play this faster than you can play it. Play it at a tempo that is reliable for you, even in the audition. Play it at a tempo that sounds good when you play it. Don't worry about whatever number it is. Okay, so here we go. Thank <laughs> you. 